everybody! My name is Athena and welcome to another Discovery Crew video. Today we're going to be answering all sorts of questions on why we find colors in nature. Now without further ado, let's get into this video. Why didn't it work? Oh, it's just an expression? I'll show myself out. Have you ever wondered why the sky is blue? Yeah, so have I. Now, this isn't really the sky, but it's close enough. The color of the sky has to do with the gases that are in our atmosphere. If you remember our animal evolution video, you'll remember that oxygen is a large part of our atmosphere. Now, oxygen is the gas that we breathe in, and it's made by plants. Coincidentally, it also has a lot to do with why the sky is blue. Now, the structure of oxygen allows it to absorb most visible light. Now, that means that it takes in and absorbs most of the colors of the rainbow that we can see. However, it doesn't absorb blue light. Instead, it reflects it back into the world, kind of like a mirror. When sunlight hits the oxygen in our atmosphere, the blue light is reflected back and forth between all the oxygen atoms, kind of like if you've ever played pinball, and it makes the sky look pretty blue. I'm looking up, but there's no sky there. Now, the process of light being reflected back and forth is called diffuse reflection. That took me a second to say. <laughs> The ocean is blue for the exact same reason. Water too absorbs most kinds of light, but diffusely reflects blue light back out into the world. But you know, blue is not the only color that we see in the sky. We see rainbows, sunsets, sunrises, so where do those come from? Let's talk about my favorite section, rainbows. Uh, we'll be joined in this section by my dog, Lola. Come. She also likes rainbows. Now, rainbows form using a special process called refraction. And no, that's not me saying reflection in a weird way. Now, sunlight is not just made up of white light. It's made up of all the colors of light, red, yellow, orange. Red, yellow, orange, green, blue each of which have a different energy level. Rainbows occur when sunlight is refracted or separated. So if the sun is at a low enough angle in the sky, all the sunlight entering rain droplets bends in different directions. Higher energy light, like violet and blue, bend for a greater extent than lower energy light, like yellow or red. So for example, if you're watching light bend through, red light's not gonna bend that much, but blue light bends a lot. That's why red is closer to the top of rainbows that we see, and other colors go down. Now, the split up light is then reflected off the water in the raindrop, refracted again on the way out, and travels to the viewers, aka you or me, our eyes. In many ways, a rainbow is kind of like an optical illusion. You can really only see it under the right conditions. Hey, why don't we take a second and talk about the conditions that you need to make a rainbow? I'm outside now! How exciting is that? Uh, as you can see, today it's pretty cloudy outside, so unfortunately I won't be able to make my own rainbow because, you know, sun is one of the required ingredients. But I might get lucky later and it'll rain and I'll see a rainbow afterward. And if it's raining where you live, maybe you'll also get lucky. How fun is that? But if not, and it's nice and sunny, I'm gonna teach you how to make your own rainbow. So first important thing is the sun. The sun has to be at a very specific angle in the sky for this to work. The exact angle is 42 degrees, but since that's really hard to tell just by looking at it, I'm gonna inform you that in the United States, before 9 a.m. and after 4.30 p.m., the sun is at a good angle for you to try and make a rainbow. Now, I don't really get up before 9 a.m., so I'm gonna have to try my luck after 4.30, but you know, feel free to wake up, wake up your parents. Why don't you all go outside and try and make a rainbow? Uh, you can actually track where the sun is in your state by looking in the link in the description below. Now, the next important thing is water. You're gonna want a nice misty spray of water for the sunlight to refract through really well. You can achieve this by using a spray bottle, which I have, I cleaned this out. It's not gonna work, but uh, but um, you know, I have it for when it is sunny. Uh, you can also use a hose, uh, even a water gun if you have it. Just be sure that if you're using a hose or water gun, you're either on a spray setting or you can put your thumb over the nozzle to get a nice misty, a nice misty 
spray. For this to work, you actually need the sun light and the spray to be perpendicular, which means if the sun is coming down like this, you're gonna want your spray to go up like this. So they meet in the middle and it refracts through really nice. Yeah, try it out. Wait for the next sunny day or if it's sunny there now, try it. And if you get like a really cool photo, ask your parents and maybe you can even submit it to our Facebook or website down in the links below. Uh, anyways, we should get back inside, but good luck making your own rainbow. Let's get back to the rest of our video. So we've talked about why the sky is blue, but why does the sky turn red and orange at sunrise and sunset? It turns out that oxygen is also responsible for this phenomenon. Who knew? Not me, I didn't know. So when the sun is low enough in the sky, the sunlight has to travel through more of the atmosphere and consequently more oxygen. The oxygen reflects away the blue and the violet wavelengths, allowing only the red, orange, and yellow to shine through. At sunrise and sunset, the atmosphere is kind of like a really long blue piece of glass. It filters out the cool colors of sunlight and lets the warm, fiery, awesome colors of sunlight shine through. In many cases, the sun plays a pretty direct role in illuminating the vibrant colors of our world. After all, it shines on everything we see. But also, it plays kind of an indirect role in the pigment colors of plants, or the things in plants that make the plants the color that they are. You might be asking yourself, what does the sun have to do with plants being green? 